Market. <coughs> <coughs> Market observations for Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Now in this video, I'm going to be taking you through a local government area level analysis. We're going to be looking at, is this area looking positive into the medium term, the longer horizon? What is the overall predicted performance of this local government area? We're going to be then diving into some individual suburbs and trying to identify if any of them are in the current buying window. So we're covering the where, and the when in this conversation. We're gonna be doing a little bit of street level analysis to try and get our bearings, trying to find some little pockets that might be worthy of our attention. All right, before I get stuck in, I wanted to say we have selected this area because we recently conducted a poll, a survey of you, our audience. The area was suggested by you, our uh, viewers. Um, so if you have other areas you'd like us to focus on, please mention it in the comments below. We will be doing another poll to select the next location. We have had Geelong put forward, uh, uh, as well as we'll look at the Gold Coast and put that back into it. It was the loser of our last poll, but we'll put that back into the next poll. Who knows, it might be the next most popular area. If you like what you see, please, it would mean a lot if you were to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you are the first to be notified of any new videos. And then also like and uh, comment on the video if you do have any questions, we're here to help. So let's get stuck right in. The Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Obviously, uh, if you've been living under a rock, you might not know, but many of us as Australians know that it's uh, really sort of appreciated in value in the last year or two. Since COVID, it has been a very uh, net benefactor of COVID, you know, migration north, uh, sea, sea change, tree changes, it's, it's positively impacted by both of those phenomena. but it is just naturally gifted by its geography, what is there. So there has been a longer trend line of Southern Australians moving north and Sunshine Coast is a very popular spot for them to base themselves. We have a lot of supply over the last few years that has been entering into this market, a lot of new homes being constructed. We have to understand that and navigate those waters. It is an area that we've been actively recommending, uh, you know, publicly since uh, about 2017, 2018, but we have to pick our spots in the Sunshine Coast. So we'll go through that a little bit today. Uh, without further ado, property investment is a science. I'm not going to go into this science, uh, into this slide in too much detail, but we need to understand where to invest. And when we do that, we're looking at more of a longer time frame. We're looking at what is the overall predicted performance of this area today. And then we need to determine, is it the right time to be buying in a strong opportunity location? So we have to get the where and the exact when. We need to do two types of analysis when we are looking for areas to buy. A simplistic one metric view is not enough. Okay, in the world of private advisory, uh, we take a, that deeper dive. We have two numbers that we look at. We have the when and the where. We need to combine those two elements. So market opportunity, this is the where. Is the Sunshine Coast worthy of our attention both now and into the medium term? Employment, okay, very, fo uh, very focused, um, not really that diverse. And I'll skip through this quite quickly, but it's okay because once again, it's focused on healthcare, social services, public administration, safety, education, training. So the big employees in the area are not going anywhere. It's not like the, the, you know, the only employment is mining, you know, high risk uh, type employment. Even though it is not really diverse, I'm okay with that because it is focused on you know, very reliable uh, public amenity type employment. Very good. Low income growth. You would sometimes expect that you have a lot of retirees, a lot of people moving to the Sunshine Coast to, to you know, semi-retire or wind things back a little bit. Um, so, you know, that might lead to stagnate income growth, but there's more to the story in the Sunshine Coast than that. Um, very good commute. You've got a large LGA. You are just north of Brisbane proper, um, you know, about an hour or so's drive. Um, but it is a, a contained local government area. You don't typically have a lot of people commuting into Brisbane from the Sunshine Coast. It is a contained, inwards looking local government area. Unemployment, it has just poked its head up a little bit, okay, in recent times. Um, we might need to watch that. 
And it is a, you know, as I mentioned, it, it is a, a funny environment there. You've got a lot of people moving to the Sunshine Coast for lifestyle changes and not necessarily for employment opportunities. So that does need to be understood. So you typically expect that it might have a higher unemployment rate for those reasons. But it is at the high point of the cycle. So it has been trending upwards over the last decade. Uh, and it has just poked its head up towards 7.5%. It would be good to see that on the way back down again. Um, but that is a, an asterisk. We'll put that there as a, as, a, as a knock against Sunshine Coast. New projects, average spend per person. We have a lot of big ticket items, a lot of transport, industrial upgrades, retail hospitality, nice public improvement, public utility improvements. Uh, this is what we like to see. Uh, big numbers, you know, many billions, multiple billions of dollars total in projects across the local government area. You know, this is a good amount of spending, but when you divide it by the number of people that live in the local government area, the per capita, uh, the per capita spend on new projects is only around, you know, average, I guess, overall. Um, so, you know, we've got those big ticket items which we want to be seeing in the area, um, but it is pretty established. You know, you've already got a lot of those public services and amenities. It is a very well evolved area uh, as it sits. Population. Population growth is always a story in the Sunshine Coast. It is up now over two, two and a half percent uh, above average across the country. This is good population growth and it is set to continue and con uh, continue to be benefiting from COVID. Uh, see tree change trends and people wanting lower density, the, the migration north, warmer weather. Uh, it's set to continue. Sunshine Coast is in prime position to benefit from those things going forward. I'll skip through this quite quickly. Very well serviced, as you would expect. It is a very well evolved local government area. Now, I just wanted to let you know that ads are part of the YouTube platform, okay? That's what helps this channel to grow. But in a moment, there will be a message from one of our competitors. They like to follow us around, okay? It's very funny and very humorous, but they do like to follow us around and imitate and watch. So bear with me for a few moments where there is an ad coming up from one of our competitors. I look forward to seeing you in a moment. The issue with the Sunshine Coast is supply. We have to navigate these waters. We've obviously had tremendous property price growth there in the last couple of years, so it's obviously not impacting all areas, but we do have some suburbs here just south of Sippy Downs uh, with over 50% new supply. So this is a trend that you see in Sunshine Coast where developers coming in, mass rezonings, mass developments, you know, you might have thousands and thousands of lots released in the one little area over a year or two period. It has been one of the darlings of Australian property spruikers for some time. You know, there is a buyer beware flag in many parts of the Sunshine Coast, but we all know there is tremendous opportunity here. So we, you know, can navigate these waters successfully. You just have to be careful in some of these inland areas, you know, some pockets up here with 18% new supply, um, in the current pipeline, we've got to stay well away from those areas. Buderim, um 4%, you know, this is average. Overall in the local government area, 4% new house construction. It is high when you compare it to the nation, okay, but when we pick our spots, I, I should zoom in on this a little bit closer, but all of these areas here, are, a lot of them are under 1% in new home construction. Um, a lot of these scarce, you know, very scarce areas because of the water, the proximity to the beaches, etc., they're already established and built out. Uh, obviously the prices are very high on that water, water's edge as well, so yields are generally pretty low. Um, you know, but we need to be able to navigate these waters successfully to buy in this local government area. There's a few gotchas, 22% uh, new supply in some of these pockets. I'm not sure if this is Warana or just around there with Warana is just here. Um, so just south of that. I do know Stockland were doing some rezoning, some new land releases, even up right up onto the waterfront there um, in recent times. There's a large new hospital that was constructed there a few years ago, and that really has sucked up that entire area around there. Uh, I can remember looking with clients in the 400,000s for three or four bedroom homes a couple of years ago in and around there, and it's probably almost doubled in price uh, in some of those pockets over the last few years. So it has performed very well. Is there still opportunity though? You know, that's the next question. Because overall, this is basically off the charts. Sunshine Coast, when we look at it from our predicted performance, the overall opportunity, remember this is more of a longer term measure. Um, this is the where, uh, it is 
essentially you can't really get much better than this. The top 99% of all areas, there really is, you know, only sort of five or so, uh, it's in the top 10, you know, the top, the top absolute slice of all local government areas across the country. We love the low new home construction in those key pockets. When you navigate that well, there is opportunity there. Good new projects coming through the pipeline, as mentioned, good employment health, when you consider the focus on those public services. Uh, we like that. And when you consider that a lot of people moving to this area are taking a step back in their life for whatever reason, we don't have this over-reliance on ed employment in this area. There's a lot of other things going on, lifestyle, new projects, public amenity. Uh, that's what the storyline of the Sunshine Coast is. And it really does punch well above its weight. Expect that trend to continue as well. This is these type of areas. We see this Ipswich is another one, and we did have that user request uh, for focusing on the Ipswich area. We'll add that to our poll. Um, Ipswich is another one where the local government area and uh, the, you know, the people in charge, you know, the councils, etc., they, they really are entrepreneurial in nature. They can see the bigger picture and they have very ambitious longer term plans for the area. Ipswich punches above its weight as well, uh, you know, similarly to Sunshine Coast where it's, the where is always scoring very highly. You know, one year into the next, it is always pointing in the right direction. We've just got to continue, uh, you know, we might have multiple entry points over a decade. We might come into that market one year, out for two, back into it again. You know, those constant entry and exits into a market because the overall longer term uh, performance, um, predictive performance is very strong. Sunshine Coast is one of those areas where it is almost a constant, where it is sitting here in the top echelon of local government areas across the country. Um, let's move on to, is it the right time to be buying here? Remember this analysis, sorry, is local government area level. So we do need to sometimes dive down into individual suburbs, but overall, the local government area, I've had some comments on Facebook, why are we doing the Sunshine Coast? It's already boomed. I think there is still some value here when we look at a suburb level, right? Um, so it's not all is lost. I'll get to that in a moment. Let's have a look if it's the right when to be looking at this, and this is local government area level data. Okay, days on market is just popping upwards. Trend line is not good, but it is still very low. So we might have some heat moving out of this market. First signal, uh, high competition. I will move over here so you can see. High competition is evaporating. Very heated competition around Christmas time into this year, but it is trending downwards. Okay, so once again, we see that the heat is coming out of this market. Stock inventory, things are sitting around a little bit longer. We can remember we recently did the Hobart uh, local government area, city of Hobart. Um, it had you know, almost one-tenth as much stock on the market, and the city of Hobart, the LGA, is only about you know, one fifth of the size of the Sunshine Coast LGA, one fourth the size even, you know, so that's reiterating how little properties are available for purchase in Hobart, but this is still very low on a national level, but it is trending up the wrong direction. So we do once again see some heat, uh, you know, dissipating from the market. Stock is sitting around, the inventory is increasing, and you'd expect, uh, you know, with those metrics that yes, days on supply is trending upwards. It's still very tight, but it is trending back upwards towards 70 or 80 days of remaining supply. Once again, confirming that the heat is coming out of this market. Asking prices have been trending upwards very strongly over the last 12 months. You know, we can see an increase of 20%, 25% there in asking prices over that period. Um, let's quickly have a look at vendor discounting. We're at a high point, 5%, a very strong seller's market at this point, and the, yes, this is now confirmation in the last six months, heat has removed from the market, okay? As we would expect, yes, the area has boomed, and look at it here in terms of sale price. All right, this is an extreme, um, you know, an extreme growth period that has been occurring here on the Sunshine Coast. Even in this last 12 month period, it's gone from you know, my approximations here of around 700,000 up to a million dollars average sold house price in the Sunshine Coast. You know, what is that off the top of your head? 30%, 35% capital growth in 12 months. That's across a, an entire local government area, right? Extreme. We all know what's been occurring there. Um, and we have seen at a local government area level, yes, the heat has been dissipating. So expect this from the buy side to be a peak and expect a consolidation period as of now, okay? 
Um, so we've probably missed our buying window there at a local government area level. Let's see, and, and there are some suburbs that I'll go into in a moment that still show some positive signs. And I will sh you know, talk through that, that if you have to or you want to buy in Sunshine Coast, there may still be opportunities. When the overall local government area has peaked, there may be some suburbs that we might be able to target. And I'll give you some hints of how to find those in a moment. All right, so we can see on the buy side, the steam has been released from this market. Let's have a look at the rental side to see if this is going to be, uh, I guess, the shorter consolidation cycle or a longer one. Let's try and see some indications here. Vacancy rates under 1%, extremely tight. Asking rents have been on a very strong upwards trajectory over the last 12 months, as you would expect. But it has started to slow down a little bit here. It's topped out at $700 across the local government area. So we are seeing potentially a short term you know, top in the rental side of the market as well. Um, maybe this market is just overall very heated. Yields have dropped. They haven't got back up to a higher side yet. So we don't have the rental pressure. Expect this market consolidation maybe to be slightly extended in the Sunshine Coast area. Uh, you know, it might extend into the, a year or two and not one or two months or, you know, three to six months. Um, the rental side of the equation, the pressure is not here either. All right, so overall, local government area, as we'd expect, long-term opportunity is excellent. Off the charts. You know, this is a, a predicted performance, very strong over the next short to mid term, based on what we can see from those, uh, you know, local government area level um, factors. But the buying window itself is firmly closed. We are in a consolidation period now. It has peaked. I do want to do a, a little bit of street level analysis for you, though, um, because there are many different parts of the Sunshine Coast. OK, and we have to remember this. It is not all about the million dollar beachfront uh, properties through here, or the, you know, t yielding 2%, or the units down here, um, the, the, the exact sort of suburbs um, just escaped me for the moment, Kings Beach, a lot of high density stuff through here on the water, um, Shelley Beach, um, Caloundra, a lot of units through there. Um, you know, we, that's, that's a story of high density focused in and around the natural amenities like the water, proximity to beaches and view, but that's not where we'll probably be focusing as an investor. The yields are just not here to justify our entry. I don't want to be generating 1.2% yield on my investments and paying in a hand over fist just to hold the property. I prefer yields, uh, you know, starting with a four or a five um, in this type of area. And so let's zoom out again and investigate slightly inland. Okay, this is a cluster up here where yields are far higher. Remember, we need to, uh, you know, there is a lot of supply in and around these pockets, so we have to navigate those waters. But we have a cluster here where yields are over that 4%. Nambour, um, even up here into Yandina. You know, these are suburbs um, which might be worthy of our attention, even in this environment. They are firmly, so this is, um, Nambour, firmly in the buying window when you look at the individual suburb, um, but it might be worthy of our attention, okay? I probably, you know, using Nambour here as an example, we can see the suburb level yield curve, right? It is a shorter time frame sometimes where yields do change at a suburb level. It is just on the way down again. I would like to probably see that popping back up again to 5%, just to get a very clear entry point into this suburb. But I just wanted to make the point that we can look into these larger geographic areas, these larger local government areas, and there are different market dynamics going on. All right, we stay away from the low yielding oceanfront stuff, the high density stuff, we stay away from the uh, you know, new construction zones. But there is some established areas that potentially have high yields. So even when a local government area is, you know, at a peak, at a consolidation now, at a, at a market top, there can be our opportunities if you were forcing or really keen on buying into the Sunshine Coast. Hopefully that's been a, a, an interesting investigation for you. Let's just think outside the box. Sometimes there are markets within markets. There is sometimes opportunity where others uh, you know, might stay away from. Uh, if you do like the content, once again, another reminder, it would mean a huge amount for me if you were to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, like this video, and even if you see other people talking about Sunshine Coast in the forums, drop a link. You know, start the conversation, spread the word. Uh, it would mean a tremendous amount to myself and the team. So thank you very much. Talk to you soon.